Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we're going to start with a new chapter, the circulatory system, and the first activity is heart and cardiac activity. We all know that the circulatory system is made up of the heart, the blood vessels, and of course the blood. To understand the function of the heart, we have to understand its structure first. First of all, the heart is made of a muscle called the myocardium. It is uh, uh, an oval-shaped organ. On the outside of the heart, we notice that there is a lipid layer or a fat layer, the yellow things here, that is that covers and protects the heart. And we notice certain special blood vessels called the coronary arteries and veins. These vessels uh, nourish the muscle of the heart itself and give it uh, nutrients and oxygen gas to function properly. Now. The special thing about the heart is that it is a hollow muscle, which means that inside it there is there are empty chambers, or not empty, of course, they are filled with blood, and between the, it has two sides. It's divided into two sides, right side and left side, and separated by the same muscle, and this the wall is called a septum, made up of the same muscle, which is the myocardium. Now we're going to study the inside of the heart. When the heart is dissected properly, we can see all of its structures from the inside real clear. First of all, we're going to start labeling these parts. The first part here, number one, is called the inferior vena cava. It's the largest vein in the body, and we call it inferior because it collects the blood from the organs beneath the heart. Number two is the right ventricle, and it's very important to distinguish between the right and the left side. The right side of the heart is opposite to your, to your right when you're looking at it, and the left side is opposite to your left when you're looking at it. So, the right ventricle, the three is the right auricle. We have an auricle and a ventricle. The auricle is up, upstairs and the ventricle is downstairs. Now. Uh, number four is also the vena cava, but it's the superior part of the vena cava because it collects the blood from above the heart. Now, number five is a very special artery called the aorta. It is the biggest artery in our body. It takes the uh, blood to all the body organs. Six is also an artery. Okay, it's the pulmonary artery. Seven is the left auricle. Notice that it's opposite to the right auricle. Eight are the pulmonary veins. They are connected to the left auricle. Nine is the septum that I told you about. It separates between the right and the left side. And ten is the left ventricle. It's opposite to the right ventricle. Now, how do we distinguish between the aorta and the pulmonary artery? It's very easy. First of all, we have to remember that this is the right ventricle. This is the left ventricle. The pulmonary artery is connected to the right ventricle while well, the aorta is connected to the left ventricle. And even if we are dissecting the heart in the lab, we use the same technique to distinguish between these two arteries. Now, uh, according, uh, relating to pulmonary, what is the meaning of pulmonary? When we say pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein, the term pulmonary is related to the lungs. When we say pulmonary artery, this means that the artery that connects the heart to the lungs, and pulmonary vein is the vein that connects the lungs to the heart. Now inside the heart there are very special structures called valves and these valves have very important roles. Here we have between the auricles and the ventricles valves that are called cuspid valves uh, while between the ventricles and the arteries we have other types of valves called the sigmoid valves. Starting with the right side of the heart, the valve between the right auricle and the right ventricle is called tricuspid valve. And this Tri prefix that's tri means three because it valve is made of three pieces. While on the other side, on the left side of the heart, between the left auricle and the left ventricle, is the bicuspid valve. It is called bicuspid because it has two parts. Between the arteries and ventricles, we have the sigmoid valves. We can call them both sigmoid. We can say this is the right sigmoid valve, this is the left sigmoid valves. 
and it has other names like the marital valves, etc. But they are, uh, they have the same function. Now, talking about the function of the valve, what is so special? What is the role of these valves? We notice here that when the blood is filled inside the auricles and wants to flow or it's pushed into the ventricles, okay, then it has to be pushed from the ventricles again to the arteries. This, these valves have to be closed so that the blood will not return back, will not go back when the ventricles contract. The blood can't go back to the auricles where they come from. That's why the valves have to close. They open only in one direction under the pressure of blood. So when the blood is pressed here into the ventricles, the valves open. They allow the passage of blood. Then they close back so that the blood doesn't flow back. Same thing here at the sigmoid valves. When the blood is pushed into the arteries, due to gravity, it might fall back down. So here, the sigmoid valves will close and they prevent, they will prevent the backflow of blood back into the ventricles. So what is the role of these valves? Valves prevent the backflow of blood or they allow the blood to flow only in one direction. Now, what is the cardiac cycle or the cardiac activity? The cardiac cycle is a group of phases made of systole, which means contraction, and diastole, which means relaxation of the heart muscle, of course of three phases. The first phase is auricular systole, the second phase is ventricular systole, and the third phase is general diastole, and we're going to explain each phase along. The first phase, which is auricular systole, as the name suggests, we said that systole means contraction, and when we say auricular systole, it means the contraction of the auricles. In this phase, we notice that the auricles contract and push the blood into when we want to talk about any phase of the cardiac cycle, we have to talk about three important points. First, the movement of muscle, what happens, which muscle relaxes and contracts, the direction of blood flow, and the valves, which valves are opened or, the, or closed. During auricular systole, as we said, auricles contract, and they push the blood into the ventricles, so the direction of blood flow is, the blood is pushed into the ventricles, and the valves, as we, as we noticed, the tricuspid and the bicuspid opened where the sigmoid valves are closed. Now the duration of the auricular system is only 0.1 second. Second phase is ventricular systole and also as the name suggests ventricular systole means contraction of the ventricles. During this phase we see that the ventricles contract and push the blood into the arteries so the movement of muscle ventricles contract, the direction of blood flow blood is pushed into the arteries. We say that, for example, the blood in the right ventricle is pushed into the pulmonary artery, and the blood in the left ventricle is pushed into the aorta. And of course, during this phase, the tricuspid and the bicuspid valves should be now closed. So as we said before, it, they don't, the blood doesn't go back to the auricles while the sigmoid valves are open. The duration of this phase is 0.3 seconds. Now the last phase is the general diastole. In this uh, phase, as the name suggests, diastole is relaxation. General means all the heart relaxes. And this phase is a preparation phase for the cycle to start again. That's why, first of all, all the heart relaxes. The, the blood will fill up the auricles, so another auricular system will start. The blood coming through the veins will fill up the auricles and it will start to slowly flow into the ventricles because there's no pressure here, there's no contraction, so the blood flows slowly. The valves here, sigmoid valves are closed, of course, and the tricuspid and bicuspid valves are slightly open because there is no pressure, as I said, so they are not open completely. This phase is uh, lasts for 0.4 seconds. So we notice that uh, the diastole takes 0.4 seconds and the systole together, 0.1 plus 0.3, takes also 0.4 seconds. 
The cardiac activity or the cardiac cycle can be uh, measured in order to study if it's uh, going normally or not, if there is any anomaly, if there is any problem in the heart activity, by uh, a certain um, way called electrocardiography. As we see here, there is a picture or a diagram. This diagram is called electrocardiogram or EKG or ECG. Electrocardiogram is a, a diagram that shows waves. Okay, these waves uh, tell us uh, about the state of the cardiac activity. Now, the, the diagnosis or the examination that is done is called electrocardiography. So someone, when he goes to the doctor and wants to check his heart activity, he makes an electrocardiography, which gives this picture or this diagram, which is called electrocardiogram. Now, as we see here, there are two waves of the electrocardiogram. Cardiogram. Each wave can be divided into three parts according to the three phases. The first part of the wave or the first wave of the electrocardiogram is named P. Then we have QRST. And then we have this resting phase until another um, a wave starts or until another cycle starts. As we notice here, the wave P is a short wave and a not very strong wave. So we can say that it represents or it corresponds to the auricular systole. The second part of the cycle, QRST, is longer and it's stronger. It has a very high wave here. So we can say that is the ventricular systole. While the part of the cycle where there is no activity, there is no electric signal, means that the heart is resting, so we can say that this is the general diastole. As we see, this, this will repeat many times. Now, how, how can we use the EKG to interpret the state of the heart? Let's say that this is the EKG of a normal heart beating. Okay, first of all, we can count the cycles that uh, appear here. We can start by counting one, two, three, four, five, six cycles. So we see here, there are six cycles in this time interval. Now, let's take these two EKGs. Uh, we notice that uh, the first thing we see uh, when we look at this EKG, that this shows a fast heart beating. Now, how can we justify that this is a fast heart beating? We have to count also the cycles is in the same time interval let's start counting one two three four five six seven eight nine so we can see nine cycles nine cycles is more than six cycles so this uh, ekg shows a fast heart beating while this ekg shows a slow heart beating as we see the same way we count the cycles one two three four cycles and four is less than six so this is an ekg that so shows slow heart beating. This is the whole activity, first activity, heart and cardiac activity. I hope that you understood it well. Thanks for watching.